Yeah, it's a good one. That's right. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 15 says, For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, or swear by himself, saying, Surely, blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, the uh, Weymouth translation says that I, surely I will multiply thee, and or uh, I will increase thee, and incre bless thee, and bless thee, and increase thee, and increase thee. So the blessing of Abraham was the blessing uh, of blessing and increase. God believes in the increase. Did y'all know God believes in the increase? Now, that's just because something decreased doesn't mean that uh, God's forsaken it. It just means that things are going on that may not be the will of God. Yeah. Amen. You know, um, we see churches go through contractions that are not necessarily the will, of, uh, they weren't the will of God. Um, we see things happen. But, it, but God's, God's blessing is that of increase. We, you, sometimes you see your finances go through contractions. It's not the will of God, but they have that, that, that happens sometimes. Things happen. It doesn't mean that it's the will. Just because stuff happens doesn't mean it's God's will that it happened. It means that <clears throat> there were circumstances or whatever took place. Um, others may not have obeyed God. You know, sometimes you, you're, you're um, in, the, in the economic realm, in the natural realm, some things are, are contingent upon other people obeying God occasionally. There may be some things in your life where it's God, there's somebody disobeying God. You're not getting what you're supposed to be getting because they didn't obey God. Well, now God will have to go get somebody else and work on them and get them to come and, and do it. But you know, sometimes that takes time. And if we all just obey God, I mean, things would just really go a lot better. <laughs> And, of course, when you're, when you're on the need of the receiving end, you really want people to obey God. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You need to be on the, the, the uh, obeying God part when it's time for you to be on the giving end. Yeah. Yeah. That went over big. Y'all are well, amen and you're a whole lot louder. That's good when it's the receiving side. <laughs> amen. <clears throat> but God told Abraham, he said, I will, I will bless thee and bless thee and increase thee and increase thee, the way with translation. And um, so we know that God's blessing is out of increase. Genesis twenty two sixteen. 16, look over there. It says, and he said, 22, 16 through 18. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and not uh, withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. Uh, thy seed is the stars of the heaven, and is the sand of the, uh, which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And, thy, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And so we see here um, Hebrews' quote of the Genesis promise of God to Abraham. And it is, it's, you know, basically, you know, verbatim or an essence of what was said. But notice what God said here um, in Genesis to Abraham, and in thy seed shall all nations be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. So, uh, not, not really preaching this morning's sermon, but you know, uh, financial increase is contingent upon obedience. I know there are people going around saying, well, because I'm under grace, it doesn't matter if I, if I tithe or give or whatever, God's going to bless me anyway. That's not true. You're, you're, you're told to give. Amen? You're told, to, you're told to give. You're told to bring the tithe into the storehouse. Well, that's Old Testament. You know what? I read Hebrews one time, and it says that the tithe, the Lord, he, there he receiveth them. Now, last I checked, Hebrews is pretty much right smack dab in the middle of the New Testament. And if he's still receiving them, guess what you're supposed to be doing? Still bringing them. If he's still receiving them, you're still supposed to be bringing them. Amen. And then, we, when, then Paul gets over into the, the book of, um, <laughs> one of the books of Corinthians. I, I just, I just, I, sometimes I just go blank on this one. But uh, over there we start to talk about uh, bringing the bounty, and he says, and, and that God's able, you know, gives to all men liberally. <clears throat> but he says something in that, that passage of Scripture, he says this. He said, let every man give as he purposes that his own heart, not begrudgingly, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then he just says this. He says this. He that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. And he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man as he purposes in his own heart, so let him give. Now, let me let's stop. Think about that for a second. The Word of God tells us, um, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 
the Word of God tells us that it's a matter of the purposing of your heart as to whether you're going to get a big or a small return. And the way you, you put that in motion is how much you give. Amen. What you do is it, it does, has, so somebody goes along, it doesn't matter what I do, God's going to bless me because I'm under grace. Well, that's, you know, and what, he, what Paul said, you know, the preacher of grace. <laughs> I love that. They call Paul the preacher of grace until you show stuff they, they don't like, and then all of a sudden he, he was not hearing from God then. <laughs> now that's, he didn't mean that. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 5. Therefore I thought it necessary, necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go up before you beforehand, your, uh, to, to make up beforehand your bounty, whereof you have noticed that the same might be a, a ready as a matter of a bounty and not as covetousness. But this I say, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, he that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not negrudgingly, or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. For God is able to make, uh, and God is able to make all uh, grace abound towards you, that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he is dispersed abroad, he is given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Notice here in verse 10 of 2 Corinthians 9, he that ministers seed to the sower. What's that mean? God, and here, here's where grace is. God's grace will cause you to have the seed to sow. And he provides, what? Bread for your food. What's that? Well, it would be un, it would not be really work real good if I, I brought you in and said, here's how it works. You sow and you reap. And give you the seed to sow, but you starve to death waiting for harvest. God's merciful. So God gives you the seed to sow. He provides bread for your food. What? Why are you waiting for your harvest? That's good. That's merciful. That's grace. Yes. Amen. Amen. And multiplies your seed sown. So guess what? No sow, no multiply. Hello? You don't sow it, it can't multiply. Now you know this. I mean, it doesn't, if you've done any kind of gardening, planting, anything, it doesn't take long to figure out that uh, if you don't plant it, you don't get a harvest on it. Now, you can take a corn seed and let it sit on your counter and say, man, there is corn right there. Lord, thank you. I'm not going to have to start because I got a corn seed there. Bless my seed. He can't bless it until you sow it. Now, if you'll sow it, he'll multiply it. And you'll get a larger return way far beyond what you planted in that seed. I'll, corn is interesting because you know, you go, get, it grows up, you get all the ears, and you know, and there's multiplied kernels of corn on all those ears, you know, bunches of corn. Big harvest on that. Amen. But he can't multiply the unsown seed. The principle, you go back to Genesis, every seed produces after its own kind. The principle of seed time and harvest. What did Jesus say? First, uh, you know, you plant the seed, then he says, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Don't plant it, you don't get a harvest. God can bless your seed, but if you don't plant it, it won't produce. This is what we call increase. So you, there are things that you have to do. You have to, in, you have to sow the seed if you want to receive the harvest. And um, we, we know this. He, he, so he ministers the seed, the seed to the sower, bread for your food, and multiplies your seed, son, and then he increases the fruits of your righteousness. So God is the God of increase and multiplication, but it is working in harmony with our obedience to sow. And he don't ask a whole lot. <clears throat> Amen. Hello. I mean, just kind of, you know, look at it this way. You know, oh my, I'm trying, I don't, I wish I had a pack of seed. All right. This is a new special high, uh, high-end company's box of seeds. 
This is called the Ray-Ban seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, um, you know, I got my seat. And I'm so excited. Hallelujah. God said that he's going to give me seed to sow and bread to eat and multiply my seed. Some. But, you know what? I'm under grace. And so, what I'm going to do is I got my seed, but, you know, I don't have to plant it because all I got to do is rest and look at the finished work of Jesus, and I can get all the harvest that this has potentially to harvest without planting it. Because for me to plant it is my efforts. It's me doing something, and Jesus does it all. But you, you're saying, well, you got to plant. No, 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 don't you understand? I just got to rest and look at Jesus, and this is going to produce harvest. And you know yourself that the seed in here won't produce until it's planted. Because there's laws that govern that. Amen. Enough of the Ray-Ban stuff. All right. There are laws that govern, govern planting and harvesting. And, me, and as long, you know, they found in the Pharaoh's tombs seeds that had been, uh, plants that had been extinct for thousands of years. Planted them, they grew. Think about that. They found, they found some seeds, and they found bags of seeds, and some of these plants were extinct. Well, as far as we thought they were, they weren't really extinct. It was just when they seed planted. So they planted seed, it grew. Sometimes your finances look like they're extinct. Plant your seed. <laughs> it'll grow. So plant your seed, and it'll grow. <laughs> Amen? It's not that it's extinct. You just hadn't had any seed planted. We always call those, those plants are extinct. No, they're not. They just didn't have any seed in the ground. Put some seed in the ground for those plants and they'll grow. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, we need to understand that God is the God of increase. 1 Corinthians 3, 6 and 7 says, I planted Paul's water, but God gave the increase. Well, thank God he's the one who does the increasing. But if you don't plant and don't water, it won't increase. That's just a, that's a, that's a law. That is a law concerning your finances. So don't let somebody rob you of your harvest or your potential harvest by trying to convince you that if you do anything other than sit around and look at the finished work of Jesus, uh, 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 like you're some drug addict, smoking dope or dro dropping acid, uh, that things are going to work. No, God says he multiplies your seed sown. So, but, and and then, then Paul said, I've, I planted a poly, uh, 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 Paulus watered, or backwards, let me get it back down here. Hallelujah. Amen. I have planted a Paulus watered, but God gave the increase. God still gets the glory, but you've got to do, you got to cooperate with God. Cooperating with God is important. If you're going to walk in harvest. Amen. Um, Psalm 107, 37, 38 says, And sow the fields and plant the vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Now notice that planting the fields and the vineyards, why? They needed fruit, they needed grain, they needed things for their cattle to eat. And by obeying there, God calls that an increase will keep their cattle from decreasing. What if they had just stopped and said, you know what, the Lord's going to bless us no matter what we do. Their cattle would have decreased. There have been no increase in their harvest because they wouldn't have had a harvest. Amen. So, um, Z uh, Zechariah 8, 11, 13. But now I will not, uh, will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heaven shall give her due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to pro possess all things. Amen. And it shall come to pass that as you were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, the house of Israel, so I will save you, and you'll be a, you should be a blessing. <coughs> Fear not, but let your hands be strong. What does it mean your hands be strong? To go plant, to work the fields, and watch God increase and bless it. Now, a good number of us, I mean, I don't know if anybody here that's, that is an actual farmer, which is fine. If you're a farmer, that, somebody's got to be, somebody's got to till the land and grow the crops. Yeah. Most of the time now, the, the small family farm is, is 
really in trouble as far as remaining the big corporate stuff was taken over the big huge mega mega operations those the small i mean it's, it's gotten so bad now that the small family farm has to designate what they're going to grow they can't even grow an extra half acre or whatever for their own food the government tells them they can't do it oh yeah one guy got fined by the government for growing extra food for him to eat because he went past his allotment well, that's crazy I said that's crazy why can't I grow corn or why can't I grow this for me because the government says you can't because they're, they want to control everything through subsidies they want to control it through allotments how much you can grow they want to they control the entire market they're controlling everything and your half acre is going to mess everything up we sell metric tons of food and a half acre is going to mess well, anyway soapbox there I don't like the government messing with stuff. Are you, are you with me? All right. Notice that Psalm, look at Proverbs. Look over Proverbs with me. So we're establishing the fact that you've got to do something. Everybody say, I've got to do something. I've got to sow my seed. If I want, increase. Look at Proverbs 3, 9, and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and the first fruits of thine increase. Now, let's stop right there in verse 9. I'm going to ask you, how can you honor the Lord if you ain't harvesting anything? With the first fruits of your increase. How are you going to honor him with the first fruits of your increase if you don't have any increase? Good question, isn't it? Verse 10. Now, listen. Verse 9 tells us to honor the Lord with all your substance and with the first fruits of your increase. Now, by bringing the first fruits of your increase to the Lord and honoring Him with it, you've honored Him with all that the, he, you're, you're honoring Him for all that He's caused to harvest by giving Him the first fruits of the increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Now, the word barns comes from Achaim, which is, is translated storehouse, and actually it's only translated storehouse in the plural, storehouses. So shall thy storehouses be filled with plenty. Now, most of us here don't have storehouses we keep our money in. You, you got you got to interpret things in, in light of what they're saying. In, in this time, their, their, their prosperity was full barns because they could sell the grains and so forth. Or they could use the grains to feed their cattle. They could sell the, the grains. They could feed their cattle and sell their cattle. So having plenty of in your storehouses, your, your, your storage barns, was, was your bank accounts. Amen? You, just, you had a barter system. We, we, we use money. They used a barter system. Okay, I've got, um, you know, I've got 3,000 bushels of corn. I'll trade you for, you know, uh, 350 bushels of taters. That was their money. Okay, that was their prosperity. It was their investments. It was their return. It was where they stored it. So they did it, they did it that way. I'll trade you three cows for two sheep. I mean, whatever. How, however they did it. Whatever they bartered out and worked out. Okay, so their monetary system in most cases and, and their savings account was their barns, their storehouses. All right, yours is a checking or savings account or your, your IRAs or your uh, CDs or your 401k, whatever you got your money or your, your stocks, wherever you put your money, that's your storehouses. And he said they'd be filled to plenty. Amen. Now, well, I don't work the fields. I don't get corn grain. No, but you work a job. And your, your bartering system is, I will give you my time and you will give me money. So your increases, your, your harvest is your finances. Amen? Your harvest from working a job is finances. And you take that to the bank account. Amen? But God says, honor me with the first fruits. So you bring your tithe to the Lord. And you honor all the substances you've gotten by, by bringing that to the Lord. Amen. And then what does God do? He says, I'll fill your storehouses. Amen. God will cause your bank accounts to increase. Amen. Didn't say bank account. Bank accounts. <laughs> and which, you know, kind of gets really cute because you got, you know, here in America, the uh, FDIC only covers up to $100,000 in any single account. Now, you can have 20 accounts in the same bank, and they'll cover each one of them at $100,000. 
but you can only have you know only each individual each account only covers a hundred thousand if I had that much money in the bank account I would have it over several different banks I would have it all in one place amen and I wouldn't have it up in New York City in the in the uh, with the Fed in gold heard somewhere that somebody Egypt Egypt Germany wanted 300 tons of their gold back it's gonna take them seven years to get it it's going to take them seven years for the Fed to get their gold back to them. I, don't, I want a bank account. How, can you imagine going down to the bank and saying, I want to get, uh, I want to get $300 out. It's going to take them seven years to get it to you. You'd you be choked some teller. Snatch the guy's my money. I want it right now. Amen. Hallelujah. So, he says here that honoring the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of your increase, your storehouses are barns to be filled with plenty. Plenty. I like me having plenty. Now, we just, I, I think we as a church and we as individuals over the past year, year and a couple of years have been through something financially. There's been a pressure and, a, and an attack. Oh my. Now, personally, I've gone through some stuff. I tell you, it's been, it's been, you know, but you know what? God's faithful. Yeah. Now, here, here's, I got to say this. We haven't gone under. Amen. Like Dad, hey, you say, said, I'd say live or die, sink or swim, go over, go under, we're going to obey you. And he said, look like we're going to do all of it. <laughs> live, die, sink, swim, go over and under. It looked like you're going to do all of it. Hallelujah. How many of you ever been there? But God's faithful. Amen. I said, God is faithful. Hallelujah. Amen. Deuteronomy 28 says that if it, in, in verses 1 through 14, we've read those numerous times, it shall come to pass, <coughs> if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord God, thy God, to observe and to do his commandments, which I commanded this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all nations. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, that... Um, if, if, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, twice God says in two verses, you got to hearken to his voice. Amen. Twice. There's a lot of people who would have jumped in verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be, woo, I'm going to be blessed in the city. Yeah, but he said you got to hearken to his voice. you got to obey his commandments. you got to do what he said do. Amen. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be in the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shalt thou be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Thine Lord, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and they shall flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. Same word. And all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God shall giveth thee. And you go back and look, reference that in Genesis chapter 12. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And the people of the earth shall call, uh, um, see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give rain unto the land in his season, and the oh. And to bless, what? All the work of thy hand. Woo! Some folks don't like to hear that. He's going to open up to you his good treasure. Amen. And that we said, glory to God. And give rain into land in his due season and bless all the work of thy hand. What's he saying? It don't do any good for me to send the rain if you don't have any seed in the ground. If you hadn't gone out and worked the fields, it doesn't do me any good to send the rain. You got people wanting the rain and the blessing, and they hadn't got any seed in the ground. What are you going to get? Wet dirt. Mud. And that's all you're going to get. Hello. Can I get an enthusiastic shunda or something? 
And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only and not beneath, if thou wilt hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from the words which I command thee this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. Now stop. How many times did he talk about obeying, doing, working, da-da-da, I mean, keeping? A bunch. All around, we're getting the blessing. And I'm not saying this is, we're not talking about works of the flesh. We're talking about walking in obedience to God. If you want to, bless, if you want to increase financially, you've got to follow God's financial laws. And there are financial laws. Amen. There are financial demands. God says, bring the tithe into the storehouse. That's Old Testament. We've already covered that. It's in Hebrews. Jesus still receives them. You're still supposed to bring them. Jesus told us to give, and it shall be given unto us. See, some people say, well, I look at the finished work of Jesus. Well, Jesus said, give. Give, and it shall be given unto thee good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men shall give unto your bosom. Paul said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, he that soweth bountifully shall, bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man, as he pur according as he purposes what? Not according to the grace of God, but as he purposes in his heart. Hello? What am I trying to say? The increase comes from God. God brings the increase. But you've got to cooperate with him. You can. The heat is gone. It has cooled off. I see people out there going. Earlier we were hanging tobacco here, now we're hanging meat. <laughs> Just can't quite get it right. Anybody ever been in a tobacco barn that was on? Whew. Hallelujah. That's why you hear people say it's hot enough to cure it back in here. They know what they're talking about. I've been in the barns. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 7, I'm going to read all this. This says here uh, um, down in verse, oh, Verse 11, let's read verse 11. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I commanded this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers, and he will love thee. And this is Deuteronomy 7, 11, 12, I'm in verse 13 now. He will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb, the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thy oil, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep uh, in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male nor female barren among you or your cattle. Listen to this. And the Lord will take away thee from thee all sickness. Uh oh, <laughs> ah. and put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest, uh, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon them that hate thee. Now he said here, man, you you sow and it'll keep sickness out of your house. Yeah. <coughs> wow. I said, wow. Glory to God. Our, our usual prayer around our dinner table is, thank you that you bless our bread and water, amen, and you take sickness from our midst. Because God takes sickness from our midst. Amen. Isn't that good to know? It's good to know that God is the one who removes sickness from our midst. Well, how did that come? In obedience to sow, in the, uh, sow to, to do what you were supposed to do. To tithe, to give, to do your part. See, God, I mean, God wants to increase you. God wants to increase you so, so much. He's already established laws <clears throat> that if you'll walk in accordance with them, they'll work right, they'll just go into operation. They'll just go into operation if you'll walk in accordance with them and stay in faith about it. Obviously, you always, what serves not a faith is sin. You always got to be in faith about what you're doing. You have to obey God and do it in faith. Amen. Hello? Can we all wave? Get your phones out and do the cell phone thing. <laughs> Mine's got a little, got a little uh, candle on it. You know, the smart, you, know, you can just take the candle out and wave the candle. <laughs> do a virtual candle. Help us, Jesus. 
So God is the God of increase. God wants to bless you. God wants to fill your storehouses full. Can you say amen? amen? God wants to bring blessing upon you, but it will always be done with your cooperation and obedience to do what he said to do. Amen. I'm convinced there are people who've missed, missed tremendous blessing. They think they're blessed right now, but I tell you, I guarantee you that they missed tremendous blessing because they didn't do what the Lord told them to do. They did something else with the money. They got blessed and had a big hunk of money and they went and did something else with other than what the Lord said to do with it. And God wasn't trying to take their, their, their money away from them. He wanted to get them more. Remember um, the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, what must I do? He said, what, you know, what, is, what is the law? You, you know, how do you read it? He said, well, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength, thy neighbor as thyself. He said, thou as well said now. Go sell all you have, give it to the poor, take up the cross and come follow me. He went away saddened because he had much riches. Now, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Jesus was not trying to bankrupt him. He was trying to teach him how to get prosperity from the Lord, which you can always keep. He would, he would have been returned. How do you know? What do you say? Go get, you say, all you have, give to the poor, come follow me. He that giveth to the poor or lendeth to the Lord, the Lord will repay. He was going to get him out of prosperity his way and get it into prosperity God's way. He was going to have a transference of how he got his wealth from, from a, a man-made way or, or even charlatans or, or underhanded or, or means that weren't just. He was going to get all his money out and then he's going to get it back to him and he's going to learn how to prosper biblically. That's what the Lord was going to teach him. Now, some, a lot of Bible scholars actually believe it was Barnabas. That, you know, they, that Richard Little was actually Barnabas that later he, he did to come around. We, we don't, I don't know that for sure. There's no fact, there's no Bible evidence. But they, they think from church history, they think that's the truth, that it was Barnabas. Well, that would be cool. You know, he came to serve the Lord. And I tell you, what, what better way of, of living your life with, with, uh, with wealth is serving the Lord instead of, you know, living and serving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here is the, one of the, the issues with the prosperity message that brings a reproach and brings problems. We spend so much time talking about getting our houses and our lands and our homes and our, and our fancy cars and, and we get our minds and our souls set on things. Now, the, you know, and for so long the church preaching God, you know, you know, I just want a little log cabin over on the other side of heaven. And I, and I get the, sometimes you got to go this way to pull them out of the ditch. But when you pull them out of the ditch, you've got to let off the clutch eventually or, or, or you're going to pull them into the other side of the ditch. So you don't have to go out of one ditch to the other ditch. The idea is to get you out of the ditch back on the road. But so much is, you know, in, is insinuated. We, we was, I was talking with, with a minister friend recently, like this week, that was here. And we were talking about some of these things about prosperity and about the excesses, and about this doctrine of giving up and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if you've ever heard that, where, you know, if you want your money blessed, you've got to give up to the, to, the, to the higher anointing, the minister. And this, that's just garbage. You know what that is? That's pocket, line my pockets with money, and I'm using pulpit to do it. And people go to churches, big churches, and they'll, they'll put tens of thousands of dollars in their pockets when they walk out of that meeting. I had one preacher I heard one time say this. He said, I was down at such and such prosperity meeting, sitting on the end of the road, and I didn't even preach that week, and people put $25,000 in my pocket. Because they're giving up. They're giving to the anointing. They're, you know, their, their money's getting anointed. My question is, what, what did somebody do for the guy who sat at the back row who mops floors at Walmart on the third shift? It's amazing how, you know, how God's only telling people to give to the higher anointing which is not a biblical teaching. There's no, there's no Bible for it. But the guy at Walmart, the God says, lend to him and I'll repay you. How much did he get? I'll guarantee you, you taught, people were taught into putting their money into the higher anointing when God was trying to get them to get to the guy at Walmart. Because he had a need. He had a family to feed. 
He's working third shift to make enough money to put some food on the table. But you had, people ran up and had to get to the higher anointing and miss God saying, I need you to give them money. And I wonder how many of those preachers that got the 25 and the 30 and the $40,000 went back and gave the man some money. Or just went and bought another $25,000 guard dog and added on another garage for another car. Hello? God. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I just have to, have to shut up sometimes. That's how God wants us to prosper. But when we, do, when we use tactics that deceive people into believing that they're going to get rich because they did certain things that are violating the Word of God, they're not going to get a return. And they're sitting around waiting for their return. And usually what will happen is those people who, who really got into that and gave money and all that get frustrated and discouraged and then turn their back on things while those guys run down the road to the next church and, and get their $25,000 for sitting on the end of the road. Hello. See, I heard Dad Hagen say a number of years ago, he said, um, I'm believing God for, and this is back when he was believing God for a million. He hadn't, believe, he hadn't gotten that to believe. I'm believing God for a million dollars. Now, he, he taught how he started that. He started out believing God for 5,000, then for 10. And every time, every time he got, a, got met what he was believing for, he would start raising his believing until that got met. And then he would start confessing and believing. And, uh, and he said this. He said, and I, and some, you may ask, what are we going to do with all that money? I'll tell you what we're going to do with that money. We're going to put it right back into the ministry. We're going to print more books. We're going to get on more radio stations. We're going to reach more people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, then, now somebody else heard that, and I heard them say this later. He said, I believe in God for a one-time gift of X number of dollars, not for the ministry, but for me personally. And they started using, that, quote, that principle to bless themselves. But see, that principle was based in getting money in to reach more people, not in blessing their, the individual. So we have, to be, we have to be careful about certain things. And, you know, somebody could come in and teach something along those lines, and they're trying to help you get, get your faith out there to, to get money coming in and to, and to rid yourself of debt and all those kinds. And I understand that. But let's always be looking for the heart of things. We want to build the kingdom. Amen? And um, watch out for people on television or even, you know, sometimes we can get a guest speaker. I, I'll be honest with you, I've, I've had some guest speakers in here that I don't even want to have come back. You know, I, I learned. I, I learned, you know, kind of sometimes, it, you know, it was, it was a bad lesson, but I learned that, you know, they really didn't have the interest of the people at heart. They had their pocketbooks at heart. And they just came in and milked the crowd while they could and went on down the road. And if they don't get invited back, fine, they got their X number of dollars. Here, went somewhere else and did it. Amen. Especially if you're paying for all their expenses, it don't, it, it's, it's wonderful. Think about it. Somebody paid for all your house payments, all your car payments, all your utilities, and then gave you money. You could live pretty good, couldn't you? Amen. Amen. I mean, just, a, you know, just a, whatever. I understand. Listen, I understand. We, the, 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 you want to go in the other side. You don't want to go in the other ditch. Well, Lord, you keep them poor, we'll keep them humble. Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. That's, that's the other ditch. I'm talking about these manipulative things. Give up. You know, stuff the money in the preacher's pocket. Wearing coats that are expanded, that, that have elastic at the bottom, and they're blouse out so they can stick it in there. And it, it, you know, it won't fall out. I was there when it happened. I was, I was just about disgusted. You got to be kidding me. Oh, it's, we're, we're helping set the people free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You believe that? I got some waterfront property in Colorado. I should say oceanfront property in Colorado. 
Amen? No, it's our cooperation. Let's follow biblical principles. Let's tithe, let's increase, let's do what the Lord says do and get biblical principles. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. When it comes to money, the number one place, the, most pla the place the Lord is most interested in is the local church. I, we thank God for traveling ministers, but I tell you what, they ought to do what traveling ministers do, is go travel to the churches. Amen. And then let them take, you know, let them minister to them of their natural, of the natural means, they minister of their spiritual means. But out all the hit, with all the hooks and all the gimmicks and all that stuff, let's just bless them. Let's just work together. Amen. But God's interested in the local church. Amen. Somebody else saying, thank God.